Hi, I'm David Penn, Research Analyst with the Finnovate Group. Thank you for joining us for our Finnovate FinTech Halftime Review Series. Today's presentation is Lending Tech, Driving Higher Close Rates, Faster Closes, and Higher Customer Loyalty. Leading our conversation today is Tom Martin, CEO of Glance Networks. He will be joined by Andrew Norman, Solutions Architect, also with Glance. Glance offers a frictionless way to visually engage with online customers securely and instantaneously, anywhere, anytime, and from any device. The company's platform features co-browsing, screen share, agent video, and a host of other engagement options. Before we begin, please know that this is an interactive presentation, and we are happy to take your questions. So please use the Ask a Question button at the bottom of your screen, and we'll take up your questions toward the end of our presentation today. And with that, we've got a lot to get covered, so let's get started. Tom, take it away. David, uh, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate the, uh, the introduction. Uh, and you know, today, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different things, but we're going to focus on four trends shaping the digital lending landscape and really talk about how visual engagement can be uh, really have a disproportionate impact um, on how your business uh, is, is, is going. Uh, and just the fact that improving CX can be such a, a huge uh, piece uh, of what we're, what we're trying to accomplish. So let's uh, dive in. Um, that uh, The fact that, uh, that we all know is lending is a really tough market. Um, and it's something that uh, uh, I'm going to make sort of this audacious assertion that delivering an exceptional digital experience is one of the only ways left uh, to differentiate and compete in this market. So I want to review a few uh, trends. Uh, there are four trends that we're going to go over uh, today. And you know, the first trend um, is, I'm just going to pause here for one second. Uh, the first trend, uh, trend number one is, you know, lending is a critical to the success of most financial institutions and that's why fintechs are all over it. Uh, according to BA research, loan growth is a top three priority for banks in 2020. And guess what? It was a top three trend in their 2019 research, too. Banks recognize that lending is fuel for their business. New loan acquisition is a key driver for many new customers, and lending customers are more loyal than most. So being able to increase wallet share uh, is a critical component. Trend number two, the lending market is experiencing major disruption. Uh, back in 2015, Rocket Mortgage launched digital lending, sending off an arms race for digital lending access and ease. Uh, back in 2019, research from Pfizer showed that now over 50% of all loan applications include some digital component, even if it's not 100% digital, um, and that is surely on the rise now in 2020 when there are so few options to walk into a bank or into a lending institution. Here we are talking about the pain of disruption is only just the starting point. Uh, what we've seen so far from digital lending startups is the unbundling of financial services from traditional banks. And unbundling is already disrupting, uh, is already disrupting to this, uh, the traditional bank. But rebundling, that phase will be even more disruptive as startups begin to expand their financial offerings and strip even more business from the traditional banks. Trend number three. Now, lending products are largely commoditized, and players in the market are struggling for differentiation. You know, as you know, there are many mortgage comparative comparison tools out there. You take a look at Lending Tree, Credit Karma, Nerd Wallet, Simple Dollar, Credible, Bank Rate. Uh, there are many of these. And these sites drive parity, forcing everyone to offer the lowest rates and fees possible. Another contributor to the commoditization of loan products is federal regulation. Dodd-Frank passed in the aftermath of the 2008 U.S. financial crisis mandated transparency and you know, the rigid qualifications for mortgage lenders and made it difficult to get creative with loan products. So everyone is dealing with the same product. And prevailing Fed policy has also been to keep interest rates low, giving lenders little room to compete on rates. 
market alert, market alert asked back in 2018, how can lenders compete with one another if their product is available everywhere at the same price? That's really a good question. And I think this is where we recognize that no longer are these institutions able to compete based on rate. And with a battlefield full of competition, the survivors will be the digital lenders who can really differentiate based on customer experience, being able to deliver better advice and guidance, being able to do it easier and faster. Uh, you recognize that humans are like water. They take the path of least resistance. And BIA research showed that customers are demanding a better CX. Nearly half of customers under the age of 55 say they would change banks for a better digital experience. So good CX will help you win customers. Bad CX will cause you to lose customers. It's that simple. One component of CX is in the in-app customer support. For a long time, help and customer support for mobile and digital apps has been an afterthought. You know, the prevailing wisdom has always been, oh, you know, we're going to make our app so easy uh, for customers to use. They won't need any help or support. Uh, but Gardner says many apps are failing to achieve the business goals because customer support is missing in the, uh, is really just mi missing as part of that component. Uh, Deloitte research shows customers would use digital tools more if they had real-time problem resolution capabilities. Another key to a great digital experience is, ironically, the human element. And this is where we come in. Delivering an expertise from your human loan officers via the app can be a powerful differentiator. Just think about being able to connect with people while they're inside the application in the middle of a workflow. And what do I mean by that? You know, loan products are complicated with lots of banking jargon. Borrowers don't just fully understand. The loan process is complicated and drawn out. Forms must be completed. Docs must be uploaded. Disclosures must be reviewed. E-signature docs must be signed. The decision is stressful, and making the wrong decision can have lifelong impacts. Any of these factors can stall or stop completely the loan application process. You know, the CEO of DocuTech, you know, they're an e-signature solution used by many digital lenders, acknowledges that the best way forward is striking the right balance of digital and human interaction. You know, just think about this. The loan officer can join the borrower in the app to offer strategic consultation about the right loan product that is a significant value to the borrower. If the loan officer can also join the borrower in the app to offer advice, guide them through and navigate, shepherd the transaction through to completion, many points of this friction process can be bypassed. And if the loan officer can join the borrower in the app for this type of interaction, we see an increase in conversion rates and the speed of closure and an increase in loyalty billing and customer satisfaction. Now, this is where you recognize that you know, there are key things where having a human being to be able to guide people through highly stressful interactions, demystify fees, really bring clarity to get them through a process can be the absolute decision maker. So when we just think about recapping these four trends shaping the landscape, how is your digital lending efforts addressing these dynamics? So I'm going to focus on app functionality, Glance's pioneer called visual engagement. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can literally drop visual engagement functionality into your existing digital lending applications to deliver better CX and drive better business outcomes. Many years ago, uh, we had pioneered the term visual engagement, uh, and it's been picked up by all of the different analysts. It's been the key ability for enterprises to leverage technology like video co-browsing, screen sharing, and annotation to really cut through the customer conversation clutter uh, to be better understood and to connect emotionally. Loan officers can join customers in the digital or mobile app with one click, no download. So to sit there and think about how you can join them uh, in the moment uh, to be able to do it instantaneously uh, on the fly, to be able to do that guiding, to be able to provide that 
a uh, human touch to really demystify a lot of the information and to get that customer to the submit button. So when you take a look at visual engagement, you know, the loan officer can appear in the app via live audio and video. The loan officer, officer can see the app's user screen. So being able to see exactly where the customer is to suddenly be able to anticipate the questions that they might have because you know exactly where they are. The loan officer can explain, highlight, guide, navigate, present, or demo. So the ability to be there with them, sitting there, looking over their shoulder to then say, oh, you know what, let me highlight this spot here, fill this information here, and guide them through that process. You know, it's really about creating a frictionless and consistent UI for customers and the loan officer. We're not just talking about only the customer experience, because we also recognize that you know, the loan officer who's trying to do their job to help that customer navigate that journey, we want to make sure that we're delivering a great experience for them. So no matter what method a customer is using to digitally engage, it's really about reducing effort. So that that important piece of a critical stage of that journey can be navigated. So here we're talking about being able to connect with someone on a desktop application, on a browser, on any type of a mobile device with literally a single click to join them. So we've gone through a number of different slides. Uh, we're going to have Andrew Norman actually show us what does this actually take a look like. So uh, Andrew, let's, uh, let's show a demo and see what this looks like. Great. Thanks, Tom. Um, Andrew Norman here. Uh, I'm a solutions engineer at Glance, and today I'm going to take you through what Glance looks like in real life, uh, both for a visitor and an agent. So uh, as I'm sharing my screen here, I've split my screen in half. The uh, orange left side of my screen is going to represent the visitor. In this case, our persona today is going to be Jennifer Smith. She's a customer of uh, our fictitious company, Global Home Lending. And on the right-hand side of my screen, I am going to uh, play the agent. And in this case, I'm going to showcase uh, our uh, Glance for Salesforce integration. So I'm looking at Jennifer's contact record, and you'll notice the Glance widget down here in the bottom with the show, join, and, and video buttons. And as an agent, this will give me some information uh, about Jennifer. So let's say we have a scheduled call, Jennifer and I, and we're going to discuss um, you know, a mortgage application, something like that. Or I could be a contact center agent that Jennifer just picks up the phone, dials the 1-800 number for global home lending, you know, and, and traverses the, the existing ACD or skills-based routing queue of that, of that phone system and then lands on me as an agent. And maybe Jennifer's contact record, you know, pops up on my screen as a, as a matter of that, that interaction. So if Jennifer were to go in, and sign in to uh, her account on Global Home Lending, and Jennifer and I are, are talking about the concerns that she may have, um, maybe she has a question about, um, uh, maybe she has a question about refinancing a mortgage. Uh, maybe she has a question about something like PMI, for example, um, where she could uh, she needs my help effectively. So as as we go through that, um, uh, there was one second. And as we go through that interaction, um, you'll notice that the first thing is after Jennifer logs in, uh, the join button on the agent side uh, starts to glow and pulse. And this gives me, uh, me as the agent a visual indication that Jennifer has logged in to our web property and she's online. So as a matter of us talking to Jen, as, as I'm talking to Jennifer, I can go through and say, Jennifer, you know, I'm happy to guide you through that, that question about maybe, you know, whether you need, you'd have PMI on your, on your loan. So with a single click on the agent side, I can click the join button. And in a few seconds, Jennifer will see a customizable prompt on her side to accept my invitation to guide her. Uh, she can accept or decline that, and that is customizable. And then within a few seconds, I can, as the agent, can instantly see exactly what Jennifer is seeing. And also, I'll start an agent video stream here automatically, so now Jennifer can see me really humanizing this integration. So as Jennifer and I are discussing the issues she's, she's having, maybe it's a question about... Um, 
you know, uh, how to free apply or go through, you know, any steps of a, uh, of a, a process like getting a pre-approval or even an e-signature, for example, um, I can bring her uh, to and guide her to a piece of content such as a PDF here. Um, I can click and drag on her screen to bring visual interest to parts of the pages that may be relevant to what we're talking about. And uh, I can go. I can say, hey, Jennifer, go ahead and click on this home lending guide. And there's going to be a bunch of great details in there for us to talk about. So she can go ahead and click on that. And this is going to be uh, any kind of PDF content that Global Home Lending has that may be uh, pertaining to a loan application or whatever workflow Jennifer may be proceeding. I can click and highlight this, bring visual interest to parts of the document that are relevant to her all while you know, her seeing me on video as we're talking and guiding through this process. So really bringing that, that human factor to that. So let's say Jennifer has gone through uh, or started to go through a pre-approval application, for example. Um, let's say she goes in and clicks on the Continue button here. And you, know, you can imagine that some of these workflows, that there are uh, lots of things that uh, are secure information, things like social security numbers, other PII information that are really important to mask uh, from a compliance perspective. And as you can see in this, uh, in this example workflow, on the agent side, things like social security numbers are, are blocked from the agent's view. So there's a, a red hatching that indicates visually to the agent here that I can, uh, I'm not supposed to see the data that she's populated in that field. As Jennifer were to type in information in the social security number field, you'll see the agent gets an indication she's typing, but none of the values that she submits ever leaves the secure TLS connection uh, between her browser and the home lending web property. And this is important uh, from a compliance perspective because none of this data is ever flowing through the glance cloud or being displayed to the agent, uh, which could result in, in a, a compliance issue. Um, you'll also notice that you know this is not um, this is using our DOM-based co-browse, so uh, this is not unfettered access to Jennifer's machine. So if she were to go over to Yahoo, for example, uh, just to check the latest news, you'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen the agent does not follow her over to to that interaction. And if she comes back and brings focus over to the tab, the agent will get a brand new rendering of of whatever uh, Jennifer is seeing on her screen. Another thing that's important to note here is, is as you know, there's lots of device types out there, phones, tablets, things like that. So as I adjust the screen resolution of Jennifer's browser, the agent's getting an accurate representation of what Jennifer is actually seeing on her side. And this is important um, as you know, web designers and UX designers have you know, curated views for mobile, for tablet, for desktop. The agent um, doesn't need to understand what device she's on. They can see exactly what she's seeing uh, on the device that she's on at that time. So if we were to go through, um, maybe Jennifer's completed a, an application here, uh, for example, and let's jump over to um, her account page. And in this case, maybe she's been pre-approved for a mortgage, she's halfway through the process, what have you, and now she has e-signature documents that she needs to sign, and she has some questions. Um, so if she were to click on the Sign Your Documents uh, link here, uh, this could drop her directly into a secure signing session. So in this case, um, this is an example of our uh, partnership with DocuTech. Uh, so this is what we refer to as cross-domain co-browsing. So if Jennifer had started this e-signature process natively from a link inside of an email, um, an agent could jump in right into the middle of that interaction. If uh, it's embedded in a workflow like we're showing here via something like an iframe, um, as Jennifer goes through, um, does things like accept consent, um, and, and really starts interacting with that e-signature platform, the agent is right there, uh, both in video and in the same kind of co-browse capabilities, to guide her just as if I was across the table from her. Um, in this particular case, let's say she has some questions about the Patriot Act. Um, I can, as an agent, I can go through, click and highlight, and really guide her through that process to complete this e-signature uh, uh, workflow without you know, any, any friction whatsoever. It really provides that human experience uh, to get that, that workflow completed. So that's just an example of how partnering with uh, folks like DocuTech Glance can uh, overlay a visual engagement session across multiple channels or domains. 
Another important point to, to talk about from a Glance architecture perspective is that Glance is an overlay. So we don't require um, the audio channel be run through Glance. We can overlay our functionality on top of various workflows, web applications, and various contact center technologies. So there's never a, a request to rip and replace your existing contact center routing um, or agent functionality, agent desktop. Glance overlays and integrates with all of those platforms. Another example of this will be sort of starting a, uh, a session like this for chat. So I'm going to go ahead and, and close uh, this, this, uh, this, this session out. And um, in this case, we're going to um, go away from Jennifer for a second, and we're going to start a chat as if we were maybe a new customer that didn't have a login profile, for example. So wh what we've done is enabled um, uh, the web Global Home Lending website with some uh, automated chat functionality. In this case, it's from Salesforce. Uh, but really any chat provider could be could be supported. And I can go ahead and start a chat request with an agent. And you'll see I get the chat request on the agent side. I can go ahead and and uh, and accept that. And uh, you know as I'm chatting with a user back and forth, um, you can we can make our sort of nice introductions. And maybe that user has a question about getting pre-qualified, for example. Um, so as the agent, I may you know have a um, um, you know, some pre-canned responses, like, sure thing, I guide you through that, that process on our website. And the customers say, yeah, sure, let's, let's go ahead and do that. And you'll notice that same orange pulsing button has also been implemented in the chat console here. So as the agent, I can do a simple click, and the customer will, in this case an anonymous visitor, will get that same experience. They can accept my invitation. And now I can jump through and, uh, and see exactly what that user is seeing. Um, you'll notice our redaction capabilities here on the top hand side uh, for passwords. You know, we always block things like password fields with our, our redaction capabilities we talked, to, talked about earlier in the demo. Um, and I can really go through and guide this user and also start a video session to, to uh, humanize this. Now you can imagine this session could also have escalated to a voice call. Uh, before it escalated up to a co-browsing video, really that customer journey uh, is is really up to the end user of how they desire that that workflow to uh, to escalate up to the the final engagement. Um, and just being able to quickly uh, highlight user interface elements to guide that user through a process. Um, I can say, hey, go ahead and click on the supply button, for example. And as the user goes through, I can visually guide them to whatever workflow they may have a, a question about in order to, uh, to solve that, that customer's problem. Again, this is uh, using our, our DOM-based co-browse approach with agent video. It's very, very bandwidth efficient, very secure. Um, uh, it's very lightweight from a device perspective, so this works very well even on things like low-powered Android devices that may be running on 3G networks and so forth, um, fully compliant. Um, and it's built for integration. So whether you have Salesforce or another homegrown CRM on the agent side, or whether you're using a desktop, a mobile, a mobile app, whatever really device the end user's on, it's a seamless experience from the agent side, one click in many cases on both, very friction free. And as an agent, I can jump into wherever that user is in that workflow without having to send them a link, um, without having to have them install anything. And I can jump right in answer their question, uh, complete their business objective, and, and really you know, drive that, that NPS scoring and customer experience uh, everyone is after. So with that, Tom, I will, uh, I will go ahead and turn it back over to you. Thanks for that great demo, Andy. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, so well, we can advance, advance here to the um, next slides and uh, you know, Glance visual engagement improves business performance uh, in a number of ways. Uh, when we think about, you know, the increasing and accelerating the closing of sales and business, uh, you recognize that when I can simply see what you're talking about, you're able to get onto the same page uh, and recognizing that um, enhancing that customer experience and that customer satisfaction because, you know, not uh, people don't go through loan processes that often and you recognize that when you don't have that level of experience or repetition, you realize that being able to you know, connect with people to improve that experience goes a long way to incre increasing satisfaction and loyalty. And being able to facilitate uh, these types of 
uh, transactions in a digital workflow um, and being able to connect with someone inside the app uh, can lower support costs. Uh, it can create a much more seamless uh, experience. And, and we know and have seen so many lenders focus on implementing all kinds of other digital tooling from comparisons, pre-qualification, estimating, you know, like an estimated monthly payment calculator, FAQs. But we know that adding visual engagement delivers a more emotionally resonant experience for high-value interactions. And getting these interactions right can have a disproportionate effect on the customer experience. As Andy talked about, you know, we recognize that we're not doing a forklift upgrade. It's engineered to be overlaid into your existing systems and apps, and that means there's no need for the rip and replace. Uh, the best in class of solutions that you've already deployed, we're able to connect with those systems to be able to augment them. Um, he talked about uh, what I consider being able to deliver intelligence uh, to that loan officer. So when the loan officer suddenly is able to recognize to say, hey, I can see that you're on one of our digital properties, and with a single button, be able to connect with that borrower to be able to guide them through. So no need for the borrower to download or install online meeting technology. It's already built in, and we were delivering that intelligence to say, wow, hey, I see you're online. Why don't I guide you through that? What a simple and easy way to do it. Um, Andy talked about the fact that you know, there's a lot of complexity to make the simplicity really work. We're connecting lots of different systems, lots of technologies, because customers start in many different channels, and they may switch to a different channel. So being able to bring all of these channels together and the appropriate technology to be able to make all of this stuff work um, is what we do uh, to make sure that it is simple and frictionless. One of the things that uh, we have spent a lot of time, uh, and in clients, privacy and security are not just an afterthought. Uh, they're deeply ingrained into who we are, how we build things, uh, and what we actually build. And having uh, a, a system and an architecture that's really designed to meet strict security and compliance guidelines that our enterprise and financial service clients require uh, has been paramount things like masking fields and information that the company doesn't want their staff to see, data encryption so the data is never at rest stored or recorded. It's always encrypted in transit. Uh, we don't use proxies to connect, and we don't store any PII except, of course, the IP address. Uh, so there are things like that that are key to know. And having that security and privacy posture has been able to afford us the certifications like ISO 27001, GDPR, and others uh, as listed on this slide. Um, so let's uh, let's dive into some Q&A uh, if anyone has any questions. And of course, what we'll do is uh, for everybody who's registered here, as it indicates on the slide, we'll, we'll send you a free ebook as a follow-up. Sure, excellent. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, and again, just as a reminder to uh, those of us who are listening to us, um, that if we, uh, if you have any questions for us, go ahead and use that ask a question uh, button at the bottom of your screen, of your screen, and we'll get to those. And the time that we have left, we've got about four or five questions in there now. So let's go ahead and take a, a quick look and see what we've got. Well, let me just take this one off the top. Cause I'm sure this is one that a lot of a lot of folks have. Is the solution browser dependent? Uh, it is not. Uh, what I'll tell you is it will work on any modern-day browser. Um, I, I can tell you that many things won't work on old, ancient, like an IE6 uh, browser, um, but that's not what we're talking about. Uh, it'll work on any modern-day browser, um, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, you name it. Mm -hmm. No, excellent. Definitely an, an important thing. I know um, we've seen some of these technologies, for example, in some of our Finnovate conferences. They've been extremely popular um, uh, year after year after year as folks really start to, to sort of hone in on, I think, some of the main topics that you pointed out, just the premise of that customer experience as a, as a, as a real point of distinction between, between companies. So it's really, it's really good and helpful to answer some of these sort of fundamental questions for folks just in terms of, of basic access. Um, another question on that, uh, sort of similar on that vein, has to do with uh, the digital banking. Uh, one person asks, um, I also have a digital banking app. Does this solution work for uh, in a digital banking context as well? It, it does. You know, we have a we have a SDK uh, that can be built into an application, and you know, based on the question, I'm, I'm going to 
you know, make uh, an assumption that this is probably a mobile application, but it could also be a desktop application. Uh, mm-hmm. And that SDK can be uh, built in to add those components into that application so that it becomes part of the application, uh, the UI and all the elements can be the same experience uh, or have the same look and feel and branding. Uh, so you can weave that directly in and add these capabilities to that application. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. I know one of the things that I found particularly impressive about the, the demonstration is the ability to toggle between sort of the, the sub-channels within the main channel of this, of this engagement platform. I would imagine there are circumstances where a person might join on, assuming, well, I do need some help, but I only need uh, this amount of help. I need only help in this degree. But then once you begin engaging with the agent, you might find that the uh, I'm willing to be more open about some of the questions that you have, about some of the help that you really need, and being able to make those switches from pure audio to the co browse to have to have the ability of the agent to show you specifically uh, on on the uh, the website what you're looking at. Um, I just think it's a really critical critical element uh, uh, to the offering. Um, let's see. We've got another yeah, couple questions, David. Uh, Please. Yeah, before you jump into another question, I was going to tell you that you know, when you're able to engage someone and you recognize that uh, you have your own sort of uh, expectations of what that interaction is going to be like, and you're now working with a, a, a loan officer that's suddenly exceeding the, those expectations, you're like, wow, that was easy. Well, you know what? I actually do have another question. And mm-hmm. because of the, that level of uh, connection, and the ability to suddenly really make it easier for the customer, suddenly they're in, they're drawn in. And when you say, oh, hey, David, do you have any more questions? Uh, you're like, well, you know what, that was easy. I do have another question. Maybe you could help me out here. And you realize that you're able to build those you know, connections, improve the rapport that you're having, and build a trusting relationship, which will probably have a better impact on being able to close the business. Absolutely. It's like they, they call it engagement for a reason, right? I mean, it really is an opportunity to really get uh, a sense of, of what the customer is looking for and for the customer to ask some questions that maybe if it was going to require a second phone call, maybe they're reluctant to make it, or a second email, uh, maybe I'll, I'll get to it later, as opposed to being able to take care of a lot of that right at the, at the time. I, I know my wife and I just purchased our first home in 2016, so we were right on the cusp of some of this transition. And 50% of what we did was back and forth to that fax machine at the local convenience store or the public library. <laughs> and then the other half was digital. And it was just uh, it was just something else, just to feel on the one hand just all these endless faxes and copy machine activity, and then on the other hand, a few clicks. Um, so it's just really, it was a really interesting place to be to really see the advantages that were really just beyond our grasp uh, uh, at the time when we were uh, doing our home buying in, in 2016. Um, let's see here. Taking a look at some of these that have come in. Um, this one's sort of similar to the question that was, uh, that was just asked. Uh, I have a bot that answers customer service questions on the web, but sometimes the customer needs more information or a personal touch. Uh, can the solution be used as, a, as an escalation path for bot engagements that don't solve the problem? That's interesting. Uh, what do you think about that uh, question? Yeah, that's a, that's a classic uh, you know, transition point where a bot is going to be grabbing, you know, the simple, you know, information that people are looking for. But once it gets to a level of complexity and the bot doesn't have the answer, there's a, there's a the natural escalation path where we can integrate with a solution like that to say, hey, do you need to speak with a, with a, a, a real agent? Or would you like to speak with a real agent to be able to provide that level of engagement? And mm-hmm. from that point on, you can then launch the visual engagement tools to be able to do a more of a seamless transition from, hey, I'm having a bot. I know I'm talking to a bot. Now I'm going to escalate to a real human being, and it could be suddenly starting with the voice and then going into some other visual tools to be able to see exactly what the customer is looking at. Yeah. And yeah, it's an important very, very piece because, you know, uh, uh, bots are not uh, – bots are here to stay, and they, they, they serve an important piece, but we also recognize that – being able to transition from a bot to a real human being um, is an important transition to be able to provide uh, a complete uh, and robust solution. 
Yeah, indeed, and that perhaps will be, as you were mentioning, some of these, these different ways that the, uh, that the customer experience uh, will be continued to, as, a, as a differentiating factor for companies and that capacity to be able to really catch folks with exactly the type of uh, uh, information delivery that they want when they want it. It seems like a further way that companies are going to be able to really, uh, we don't just offer bots, but we really do offer that complete suite, that continuum of, of engagement that folks, are, that folks are really going to want. Yeah, indeed. indeed. Um, here's a technical question for you. It's, again, I think one that probably is, is common among a lot of the folks who are, who are listening in. Um, and this has to do with integration. Uh, the person asks, you mentioned that your solution can be easily dropped into my existing digital lending app. Uh, how do you do that? Is it an API integration? I think that's a great question. Well, the, the, there's a number of different ways. Um, there, are some, uh, there are some solutions where we've built uh, some pre-existing integrations that you can then use that integration uh, to really streamline that process. Uh, and it could be something that's like going into DocuTech or another uh, FinTech platform, or it could be another CRM. Um, but if it's not one of those where there's a pre-built uh, integration, we have a set of APIs that would allow you, with some guidance from us um, and some navigation, to be able to take and build those solutions uh, into your application via a set of APIs. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. I think that was what, uh, maybe the assumption, so it's very excellent to hear that sort of fleshed out in terms of some of the different yeah, options and, that folks have. Yeah, and, what, and, and along with that, you know, there's a, a lot of people that are, are looking for not just, oh, there's an API, but they're also looking for, hey, what's the best way to do this? Um, do you have some you know, mock-ups or do you have some UI and CX elements that we can suddenly bring in, and so you can say, well, we actually have some digital assets. This is how we would actually put some of these things together to be able to give someone um, a view of what that actual you know, solution might take a look like. Right, right. And again, I just want to let everyone know that we still have a little bit of time. Uh, if people have questions they would like to uh, to have us uh, address before we wrap up. Again, I know some of the questions that were asked were, were really good sort of comprehension questions that I think uh, uh, a couple of folks probably in the audience. Uh, and again, I know when I've uh, we've had some of the uh, technologies like this presented before on the survey stage, some of these questions about integrations, about digital banking apps, browser dependence uh, have, have, all come, have all come up, and it's really good to hear some of those covered. I wanted to just touch base on one thing that I thought was really interesting. It was interesting when I previewed these slides, and I don't know if it's, if it's worth redressing, but that concept of rebundling. I know a lot of folks right now with the conversation on disruption are talking about the unbundling and, and all the different aspects of the financial services equation that are being sort of taken by different entities. But that concept of the rebundling and that hockey stick-like move that you show on that chart is something that stuck with me ever since I saw it the first time. And I wondered if maybe you could touch just on that concept and how powerful a concept that's likely to be going forward. Well, um, when you really think about uh, how some of these things are being you know, unbundled and then rebundled, uh, there's some natural things that I think uh, you know, banks are struggling with on really trying to figure out how do I meet the needs of the customer. And, um, and that level of dis sort of disruption that uh, is happening uh, is, is happening because there are companies, you know, like, you know, Rock and Mortgage and Loan Depot and so many others that are suddenly going, hey, you know what, we're going to actually pull all these different things together and make it much easier for you to either, you know, grab the things that you want uh, to be able to assemble the, the right financial components that you want. So I think, there are things that we're starting to see that, uh, frankly, are things that five years ago we would not have necessarily um, pulled together. But you start to take a look at every little aspect um, of what the bank was providing. And as a, as a, as a, as a, from the standpoint of if I'm a home lend lender and then maybe saying, hey, you know what, I'm an individual and I have all of these things that I'm trying to take a look at from I need a loan, I need a credit card, I need to, to be able to save, I need a loan for my house, I need to do all kinds of things where maybe I'm you know, getting a car and you take a, someone who's now going to organize all of these things in a completely different way. Uh, it's a fascinating world to see what's happening because you, know, you now have to take a look at someone like Intuit QuickBooks where uh, because you're using QuickBooks as a small business, they can suddenly say, hey, we can actually offer you a loan because we can see what your books look like. 
Um, or if you're suddenly doing your taxes with Big TurboTax and you recognize they have all my financial information and now they can streamline access to um, other um, financial opportunities um, or solutions that may I may qualify for because suddenly they're taking a look at this from a completely different perspective. Um, mm-hmm. the, game is, uh, the, the game is on, and we're just starting to see uh, some of the impacts of what this rebundling takes, uh, takes shape in. Truly, truly. I, I wanted to maybe touch on one thing, maybe, maybe by way of, of, of wrapping up. I, I don't see uh, too many uh, questions asking anything different uh, coming through. So maybe by way of, of wrapping up, I thought one of the most interesting things to me about technology in, in, in general is the way that it sometimes seems that the deeper we go into technology, it's all a way of helping us do a better job of, of being humans in some respects. And I think that when I was, uh, my wife and I were, were buying our house, the two faces I remember the most were the face of the convenience store clerk where I was getting that fax work done and the email picture of the loan officer whenever the email would go back and forth. And it was just this tiny little picture in the corner, but I can still see her face when I close my eyes because it was so much back and forth and the, the emotions that were involved. And I think about this here where you're going through the, the process just like so many of us do buying a home, the emotions that are involved in that. I just wonder about the ability in all that digital stuff to be able to see the person you're working with, to see the loan officers, their face, they're looking right back at you while you're going through this process. Maybe as a way of wrapping up, can you talk about how that, sort of interjecting that human element amidst all of this technology is, is a helpful part of, of this process? Yeah, no, I thank you for, for that, David. Uh, yeah, I think one of the things I talk about a lot is that uh, people like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. And we have seen and know that uh, when you're able to turn on video and see somebody, uh, you're able to de-escalate the call. You're able to build uh, that emotional connection that uh, can be done much more rapidly than the success of conversations. And it can be something that you're like, wow, uh, David, it's you. You're the person who's there to help me out. And we, we recognize that, these types of elements uh, have such an impact on how people start to perceive uh, the, the business so that instead of just thinking about you know, it's this cold face of a digital company, you're now actually you know, connecting it with a real person who's like, hey, David, I'm here to help you out. Let's get this done. You know, um, mm-hmm. this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you get through this loan or whatever it might be. And you know, we have seen you know, companies who have done this where, um, we could talk about all these great things like, wow, they've improved NPS and customer CSAT and they've increased conversion rates. Uh, but what they've seen is uh, a disproportionate impact on the lifetime value of a customer um, and their ability to grow and expand their customer. So the one part might not be the full story. It might be, gosh, let's take a look at the lifetime value of a customer and when we're able to make uh, a simple transaction, you know, or even one that's very complex, uh, and really demystify it, uh, get someone to the end, uh, to the end of actually submitting it and getting the loan done, and you realize well, what does that look like long term, and you realize um, it's that long term benefit of suddenly connecting that human element that really translates to uh, increased lifetime value, increased wallet share. Uh, so for businesses that are really starting to take a look at this. And we've, we've seen this in terms of um, Intuit. You know, it was a you know, spoiler alert. They're a customer of ours. And you know, they just a couple of weeks ago uh, on their earnings call to the market were talking about how CX is having an absolute amazing time in driving real business. Um, so this is one of the things where people are going, you know what, um, if I'm going to buy something, I end up wanting to talk to an expert. So I'm going to talk to a friend. I'm going to talk to someone who knows before I buy. And that's where the human element inside of, uh, of a workflow where you can deliver expertise in the moment, real time, and be like, David, it's Tom. I'm here to help you out. Let's get this thing done. It can be you know, the best thing that you can invest from a technology standpoint over the next few years. 
Absolutely. I uh, agree 100%, and, and then well put as well. Put as well. Um, we're about out of all the time we have for, for today, unfortunately, uh, but I want to thank you, uh, Tom, very much for a fascinating presentation. Thank you, Andrew, for that demo that, again, I think really walked people through the platform to get really understanding some of the functions and the capabilities uh, of, of the technology. And, of course, thank you to uh, our attendees, those of you sitting in questions, those of you listening uh, uh, to the podcast. Um, very much appreciate that, as, as always. Uh, you will be able to access this and in a few weeks from the Finnovate blog if you'd like to go back and review or, or to let some of your colleagues know about some of the, uh, the insights that Tom and Andrew shared with us. Uh, again, a few weeks down the line, that will be up available for you uh, on the Finnovate blog as well. So with that, uh, our thanks to Tom, our thanks to Andrew, our thanks to you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Dan.